All right, we are tasked with finding the equation of a sinusoidal function. So we're given a graph. We want to find what function produces this graph. Okay, so when I get going on these, we can choose either sine or cosine. I think cosine tends to be a little bit easier because with cosine, you're looking at the very highest peaks before it repeats, right? So if I kind of focus on these two points, I know that the cosine graph starts at the top and ends at the top, as opposed to the sine graph that starts like in the middle, goes up and comes back down and then ends in the middle. That can be a little bit more difficult to kind of pick out. So I'm gonna go with the cosine graph in this case, all right? And then we wanna pick out a bunch of different information about this, the amplitude phase shift, the change in the period, a vertical shift. There's all kinds of stuff going on here. Let's first focus on the amplitude. So the amplitude would be some change in the number out in front here, um, basically how high and how low it goes. All right, so you're looking for a multiple that would sit out in front of the entire function. One way to compute this is you can do one half and then multiplied by the absolute value of the very highest value you get to. So in this case, it's a y value of one minus the very lowest y value you get to. So this very lowest y value looks like it's negative five. Okay, so that's gonna be one half multiplied by the absolute value of one minus a negative five, which is one plus five makes six. Absolute value of six is just gonna be six. So half of six makes three. So that kind of tells us we're gonna get a three sitting out in front here as a multiple. It's gonna be a stretch of the entire function. The next thing I was like looking at is this has been shifted vertically. All right, so sometimes we say that's the midline has been affected or we're thinking about a vertical shift. All right, a vertical shift is gonna have a number attached to the entire function, like added or subtracted at the end. Now, I think something's been subtracted from the entire function here. Um, everything's gonna be moved down a little bit because this doesn't have an equal amount above and below the x-axis. All right, so to get this, what I like to do is, it's like taking the average between the highest value and the lowest value you attain. So to take the average here, what I would do is go ahead and say, well, the highest value is one, plus the lowest value is negative five. And to take their average, I'm just going to add them together and divide by two. So in our case, that's gonna be a negative four divided by two is gonna be negative two. So everything's been shifted down two units. And if I wanted to draw the midline in between here, I'm just gonna to try to draw a line going straight across here at negative two. And what that should look like is an equal amount of the graph is above this midline as is below this midline. Or as you can kind of say here, you go from two, you go up one, two, three units to the top, or from negative two, you can go down one, two, three units to the very bottom, which kind of reflects our amplitude change here. So what that tells me is at the end, I'm gonna have a minus, sorry, get back to my pen, a minus two attached to the entire function. Now the other stuff that can be going on here is we could have a phase shift, a number added or subtracted directly from X, and we could have a change in our period. So it looks to me like we do have a change in our phase, like the phase shift, this highest point, normally what that does is it starts right at the Y axis, but this one's been moved to the right one unit. So directly from X, I am going to attach a one and what's happening there is it's been moved to the right one unit. So I'm gonna subtract one directly from X. Now the very, very last thing that we haven't taken into account is we could have some multiple in here that would affect our period for the entire graph. Okay, so let's do a quick computation to figure out what that value for B should be in here. So that relies on the period. And how we normally compute the period is we normally say, well, it's gonna be the original starting period for cosine, which is two pi, divided by technically the absolute value of whatever B is on the inside here. All right, but in this case, it also has to equal however far it takes from beginning to ending before you start again. 
basically. So the period here starts at one, and ends at seven. So that covers a total of six units. Seven minus one equals six. So we've set up a quick equation with two pi divided by b is how we normally do this computation for our period. But by looking at the graph, we can also say it covers six units from beginning to the end before it starts repeating itself. So with this equation, let's go ahead and solve that down for b. So to solve for b, I can't solve for it while well, it's in the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by b. That's gonna give us two pi equals six b. And then to get b all by itself, we'll divide both sides by six. So we've isolated b on the right-hand side. And we can say two pi divided by six is equivalent to pi over three. So really we should be using a value of pi over three where our b is up in our function. Maybe I'll call our function f of x, but it's gonna be three multiplied by cosine of, and then big set of parentheses here, we said pi over three was gonna go in b spot, x minus one inside this inner set of parentheses with a minus two attached to the entire function. And there's our function that's gonna produce this exact graph. So I hope this made sense step-by-step step as we went through, identified the amplitude by using this calculation, the midline or the vertical shift by taking the highest y value plus the lowest y value, taking their average. That's where we got this minus two at the end. And then setting this up with the period uh, to calculate what B is along the way. This minus one came from the phase shift going from the y axis, moving everything to the right one unit for our starting point here. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck. Keep practicing. You guys.